you can read like we'll go back to the F1 and you can tell that any rocket engine all right when you go to its specs all of its specs are well l let's not say all of its specs but its specs are based on its thrust specs are based on sea level okay if rockets worked in space this would not be the reference they would go by all right they would go by in space in the near void or the near vacuum of the void that's what all these numbers would be posted from instead they post numbers from sea level why because it gives them these big giant numbers where people come on a website just to read about it vaguely and they'll be like oh wow huge numbers man I guess those rockets do all the crazy speeds that they say but really the higher you get from sea level these numbers start going down why? Because now one of the variables that was the number 14.7 starts becoming less and less of a number in the formula. All right, now in their world, the, the way they got people hoodwinked is they got them thinking, oh, actually, as that number decreases, our rockets actually do better because <clears throat> there's less atmospheric drag and less gravity. Don't forget that there's less gravity as you get higher off the ground which is nonsense they tell you that there's still 90 percent gravity right where the space station they tell you is and that that's how the space station manages to continually orbit is because 90 percent of the gravity still exists meanwhile when you see them let go of something outside the space station it doesn't immediately fall just like you see Felix uh, Baumgartner or any of those people you know jump out of something way up in the in the sky like that uh, ninety percent gravity started ripping them toward the earth right away but then in their videos they want you to think they're out there floating around whee, whatever so somehow their tools they let go of on accident and things like that don't immediately start dropping like a rock toward the earth but uh, of course they have reasons for that you know they're higher off the ground they're further away da 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 but if ninety percent of the gravity still existed at that point then that means their tools, everything should just go straight toward the earth. As soon as you're not a part of that ship and you're not hooked to it anymore, you should just start falling straight toward the earth. And the, the ISS would have to have continual uh, engine propulsion uh, because the 90% gravity would overcome the, the speed that it has in space regardless. Uh, everything degrades. And so, anyway, let's get back to this though. The point is sea level. All right, all these numbers are only big old awesome numbers like the effective exhaust velocity, which I explained in another rocket video that specific impulse is the effective exhaust velocity. Anytime you want to find out how fast a rocket goes, and it doesn't matter how many engines it has, all you have to do is find the specific impulse, all right, and you get rid of that term. Once you get a lock on what the specific impulse is of a certain engine, you just erase that term from your mind and you replace it. You replace it with effective exhaust velocity. And this number of specific impulse will be the, the effective exhaust velocity of the rocket. And when you do uh, discover what that is, in this case less than 6,000 miles per hour, now you know what the absolute maximum the rocket could ever attain speed-wise would be and it wouldn't matter if you had a thousand engines hooked to the vessel or just one because this number never increases no matter how many engines there are, there are. Uh, all you do is increase your top speed beneath this number from rest to top speed would happen faster the more engines you add but remember with the more engines you add the more weight you add the more size of the vessel you add which is thus more weight and the more fuel you have to add for all the more engines so there's a thing about rocketry like well it's pretty much with everything else where you can't just keep adding and adding and adding and getting more and more benefit you hit a diminishing plateau um, where a diminishing gains plateau where there's just no matter how much you do you're barely getting any return from it um, and so the same thing applies with rocketry uh, you can't just keep building a bigger and bigger and bigger rocket with more and more engines and go faster and faster and faster and further and further it just doesn't work that way they'd have you believe it works that way but it doesn't work that way so in this case you know of course the Apollo never achieved more than 6,000 miles per hour because this is the action in one direction to create reaction in the other direction okay 
and it's not even factoring in atmospheric drag, low pressure zones that might hit, uh, any of that stuff. It's not even factoring those things in, which would all slow the rocket down further. Okay, they would. Nothing helps a rocket go faster. Everything makes a rocket go slower, hinders it, slows it down. So uh, this would never be the case. You'd never achieve anything more than that number. You would never even achieve this number because this number would be in a perfect world. It likes space, their fantasy of space. It would be where there's absolutely nothing hindering the rocket whatsoever, and it could easily achieve its full potential, which would be this number. But Again, as the you get further from sea level, the thrust to number goes down, 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 until there's nothing left. And so once you hit the void, that's it. There is no, all these numbers become zero, okay? No thrust. Uh, burn time would be irrelevant. Specific impulse won't matter. Chamber pressure could care less. The weight irregardless or it doesn't matter nothing matters none of it matters the height the <laughs> nothing matters anymore it all becomes worthless once you hit the void why because this number goes away to nothing it's only important and big at sea level they would have you believe well they don't care what you believe all right as long as you believe that their rockets work in space that's what they want you to believe so as long as you believe that, they don't care how you arrive at that belief, as long as you do arrive at that belief. So I had some trolls visit my rockets vids, declaring that my action and reaction principle applying to rocket and jet engines is false, declaring that I don't know what I'm talking about, that I need to go back to high school that a vessel absolutely can achieve a much higher speed than its exhaust velocity. So, I figure since they don't want to listen to me, maybe they would listen to the Department of Transportation of the United States of America, or the Federal Aviation Administration. I mean, after all, what would the FAA know about flight and propulsion and thrust Right? So let's hear what they have to say. But what about thrust in the case of jets? The exhaust gases and air are pushed out of the exhaust with such tremendous action. Uh-oh. What was that word? Tremendous action? The balancing reaction. Whoa, what was that word? Did he say reaction? What does that do? Thrusts the aircraft forward. No. uh Let's hear that again. But what about thrust in the case of jets? The exhaust gases and air are pushed out of the exhaust with such tremendous action that the balancing reaction thrusts the aircraft forward. Now, something I should point out there that may have slipped by your mind. Notice he says the balancing reaction. He doesn't say the much greater reaction. He says the balancing reaction. Don't believe me? Listen again. But what about thrust in the case of jets? The exhaust gases and air are pushed out of the exhaust with such tremendous action that the balancing reaction thrusts the aircraft forward. The balancing reaction. All right? Not the much, much, much greater reaction. So a vessel will never achieve a speed higher than its exhaust velocity. First of all, it'll never achieve 100% efficiency because of losses. You have atmospheric drag, you have the weight of the vessel, you have low pressure zones. All of those cause a plane or a rocket to slow down. All right? None of that helps a rocket or a plane ever. They are a hindrance. They cause loss of efficiency. So, a vessel will never even achieve its exhaust velocity's speed. Otherwise, you would believe in perfect unity, no loss whatsoever, 100% efficiency. But if you believe a vessel will achieve a much, much greater speed than the action coming out of the rear of it to create a reaction in the other direction, then you believe in over unity. Get that through your head. So one more time, just so you can absorb from what you consider to be the officials in flight. But what about thrust in the case of jets? 
the exhaust gases and air are pushed out of the exhaust with such tremendous action that the balancing reaction thrusts the aircraft forward. And I rest my case.